Uh, hi everyone, you're welcome to my professor note. So in this video, you are doing the analysis of uh, the J and K set PYQ piece, the question which were asked in the 2016 paper too. So here we will be covering all your previous years question paper analysis of your all set net and gate examination. So today it is J and K set, uh, right? Uh, so that's what we will discuss here. And uh, if you want any uh, study material regarding this uh, JNK set net gate examination for English literature, so you can let me know. I have given the contacts below in the de description and uh, I'll be more than happy to share all the details with you. So let's start with our first question here. And you can also join us on our Telegram channel for the quizzes and all, right? Uh, so let's start here. The first question, which of the following character in the Canterbury Tales has gone three times on a pilgrim, pilgrimage to Jerusalem? So Canterbury Tale is one of the last work of the Geoffrey Chaucer, right? Uh, he has an aim to write 120 poem, but he succeeded to write only 24. And out of these 24 tales, uh, we know that two are in the prose, right? And uh, 22 are in the verse. Right, so one of the tale which is in the prose is told by the parson here. One is by the Chaucer himself. So who went three times on pilgrimage? So parson is a clergyman, right? A church person he is. And he, he lives in the poverty. And he is honest of all of the people who are here, right? He is a very religious guy. The rest of them are just religious in their name, like a monk. He is he is more devoted for hunting and eating. So he is obviously not the one who is going to the Jerusalem. None. Uh, her name is Eglantine. Uh, she speak the very poor French, and we as the emulate, uh, which reads "Love conquers all." And she is the one who tells the tale of the Chantclair, uh, the rooster. B, we have here the wife of Bath, uh, who went to the pilgrimage to Jerusalem three times. She got married five times and uh, her last husband, Junkin, gave her a, a smack on her ear that she got deaf because uh, uh, Junkin wa used to read the wicked wife's stories. And one day she ripped a page apart of his book and he got really irritated and as a result, he hit her uh, really hard that she got deaf and uh, so b is the right option here for your second question uh, let's talk about the second one here something is written in the state of denmark heaven will direct it so denmark the king of denmark the father of the hamlet right the ghost is appearing and marcellus is talking to horatio this that uh, the something is wrote in the state of Denmark. The corruption is going on there. And who this corrupted guy? This is a Claudius. Claudius, who have killed, who has killed the king of Denmark, the father of Hamlet. And this dialogue, uh, they are, they this uh, scene, or this dialogue is said in the first act, and the scene four by Marcellus to the Horatio. Third one we have here uh, in the drama Twelfth Night, Viola tries to convince Orsino that women can feel love by. So Twelfth Night, uh, Viola jo hai, wo Orsino se bolti hai ke women can feel love by in which way, like how? Uh, so she says that telling him of her sister's love. Viola, we know that uh, she is disguised. She is a lady. Right, and she is in love with the Orsino, and Orsino is in love with Olivia. So there's a love triangle in this play, right? And Viola tries to convince Orsino that women can feel love by telling him of a sister's love. So some of the things that you need to remember uh, from Twelfth Night is one that there is uh, the love triangle. Malvio is one of the character. Uh, right, uh, and uh, the later we have seen the influence on the other books as well of this play here. Even though all the plays of Shakespeare have a great influence on the later plays uh, and the other works, he is a huge giant. We all know that. The fourth question here is that uh, identify the play 
from which uh, this line is taken sir i am waxed bear with my weakness my old brain is troubled be not disturbed with my infirmity so these words are spoken by the uh, prospero to ferdinand in the tempest and this happens in the tempest act 4 scene 1 one of the last play of shakespeare all right uh, so this is your fifth question now which of the following so here we have to match the authors and the works so symbolism of poetry so what is the symbolism of poetry symbolism where we use a symbolism to express the idea for example the symbolism of fire the symbol of fire what does it express it express our anger it express our passion you know so, so in this way so symbolism of poetry is a work by wb yeats composed in the 1900 and Arthur Simon is the one who uh, who wrote the uh, symbolist movement in literature in 18 1899 right Kenneth Cornell uh, he's the one who wrote this uh, symbolist movement and Henry Levin is the one who wrote the symbolism and fiction so these are the things that you just have to mug up here right so you can make a connection here sir this is your task that you have to choose one over here that which one will be the correct at least you can do this uh okay let me do this for you two is one so two is one here as well arthur simmons one two uh one two yeah it's here two then we have need three four three four yeah i think this is the one uh yeah four three yeah we got this is a <clears throat> even though you don't have this much time and uh, your paper yeah i think for paper english uh, english literature is good you have a lot of time because you do not have to like do your maths or reasoning here your paper one takes some more time and uh, we will also do the analysis as well but today it is uh, your uh, english literature so who has uh, who was ben johnson uh, who was ben johnson referring to when he said he writ no language to kisko yahan pe ye refer karta hai ben jones uh, johnson jab bhi kehta hai ki he writ no language so this remark uh, appeared in his ben johnson's work which was published posthumously timber and discoveries timber and dis i'm going away from the page discoveries right it was published uh, the post Thomasly, and here he said this uh, here he made this remark regarding the edmund spencer that he read no language uh, seventh one we have which one of the following is not a graveyard poet a case may say cons up now graveyard poet nahi hai so thomas parnell it's not Parnet, actually it's Parnell. Uh, he has written a night. So who are the graveyard poets actually? Who They are also called the churchyard, churchyard poet. They have the themes of death, mortality, grave, epitaph, the words written on your grave. Related to uh, the uh, the concept related to your to your uh, to your death, they have in their poem mentioned. So Thomas Parnell have wrote a poem, Night Peace on Death. Night, oh my God, look at my writing night peace on death okay night peace on death he has written the second one is the edward young long uh, so edward young also have written uh, the night thoughts on death life and mortality right he has also written a poem so obviously he is again a graveyard poet then we have robert blair he have written a poem called uh, the grave right in the blank verse then we have the thomas lopica he has written a work called uh, a, uh, the four ages of poetry right four ages of uh, poetry uh he, it, it was uh, published in the 1820 right it's, it, it is a very important work i want you to go through it and then this uh work got a reply from the uh, from your shelley uh he he wrote as a reply a defense to poetry Right, which was published posthumously in 1840. Here he mentioned the four ages of poetry. Like a first is Iron Age, 
right first is iron age second come your golden age in golden age we have the uh, shakespeare then comes your silver age silver age silver age we have the pope and the dryden now he said that this is the age of brass now and uh, so this uh, work got a reply from shelley then as a defense to poetry which was published in the 1840 so thomas lopic is not the one who is a graveyard poet as so we have other uh, graveyard poets as well uh, like your thomas gray who wrote uh, the elegy elegy in the churchyard right and then we have uh, this uh, your william cooper he is also uh, the graveyard poet right so you can get their list uh, then we have the eighth question here uh, which is the the concluding line of tests of dubilis right so just write down in the comment box when this book was published president of immortals in asceline phrase had ended his sport with the tests is a fine example of so what is this example of this is the irony of fate right irony of fate ke bolte hai na ke jo bhagya mein likha hai use kaun kaun dal sakta hai honi ko kaun dal sakta hai right so it's the irony of fate here it is also called a cosmic irony theek hai jo hona hai wo to hona hi hai ye bol sakte hain uh then we have the mound uh, ninth question we have here the mound of doves in immemorial immemorial elms and murmuring of innumerable bees uh so what we have here uh, which uh, which of the following figure of speech is used here it is paradox oxymoron alliteration so whenever you find a a sound word like a mound murmuring it's onomatopoeia right all the time when you see a sound word like a hiss all the sound words they are called the onomatopoeia in alliteration we have a repetition of the first word uh, like we see as in the break 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 of ts eliot again this is one of the example we have then we have paradox in paradox we have a contradictory statement uh of uh, for example there is a light in the dark oxymoron is a self contradictory uh, they are two joined words uh, for example we can say the cold fire right so this is what oxymoron is the 10th question apna hai uh, in which of the following works of milton does the following line appears who overcomes by force hath overcome but half his love so these line appears in the paradise lost book 1 is a huge work like inshallah hum ise bahut jaldi karenge <laughs> apne channel pe uh but first just complete this view iq be here uh, authorized uh, uh, version of the bible appeared in the year Uh, so in which year this authorized version of bible appeared it appeared uh, it, it was the king's bible right it is also known as a king's bible which was the authorized version of the bible it appeared in the 1611 all right so then we have here the who was dr samuel johnson referring to when he says he found it brick and left it marble so uh, dr samuel johnson said these line in his work called uh, lives of the poet right here he said these lines for john dryden he called him the father of criticism and he has uh, he has transformed the english poetry and he found it brick and left it marble so it was in the context of poetry here right he and he said this line to john dryden in his work called lives of the poet in the lives of the poet yes my writing is getting better now uh the character friday appears in which of the following novels of robinson crusoe obviously is daniel defoe so friday appears in the robinson crusoe novel right uh, so he is a slave uh, of robinson crusoe here and uh, he is a servant 
it is also con then mentioned in the post colonial studies uh, later on so uh, robinson crusoe is uh, a is the novel which is uh, published in the 1711 and he uh, uh, he he convert him to christianity this character friday is converted to christianity by the robinson crusoe the true born englishman was a novel by daniel defoe uh, it was written in the 1701 The shortest way of descent is a pamphlet written in the 1702. Uh, Robinson Crusoe we know is 1719. Then we have Mal Flanders is 1722. All these works are by your Daniel Defoe. Ah, uh, then we have here the 14th question. In which of the following drama the dialogue time will easily scatter the tempest appear? I so weird like it is a tempest so you can make a connection tempest but it's not these lines were uh, these lines these words were spoken by the duchess in the duchess of malfi right this is the work of john webster as a ruler when she was the ruler when she became ruler so as a as a ruler she said these words time will easily scatter the tempest so these are the words by duchess make sure you remember this these are the words by the duchess in the duchess of malfi okay uh another one we have here the r w emerson so this one is a interesting question r w emerson delivered his speech american scholar in one of the following american societies so american uh, scholar was was speech given by the r w emerson and uh, american society phi beta kappa society it is uh this uh, this uh, phi beta kappa society in, is in the harvard college right so this is where he has delivered his uh, speech he was invited there to uh, uh, talk about his ground breaking work nature and nature is I, i think we need to work like this here in this work he given a new perspective he given the 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 new uh, the new dimensions uh, for the american culture right uh, to give the american culture a new identity because they were also colonized by the by the british they they also went there right they they controlled them they colonized them and when they got the freedom they still have the impact right as in india we we are called the hybrid generation we are half indian half english but he wanted to give this american culture a new identity and that's what he has discussed in his nature poem a nature is a work right uh so this is a nature is is a great work i want all of you to just take a look at it at least it just inspires us right uh, like how can we uh, come out of uh, someone's influence and here he discuss the three things of the scholar's education as well that one is the the nature right uh, which provides you that mindset second one is the past uh, which helps uh, th that can be manifested into the books and third one in the action that you have to take right uh, 16 is the term yahoo appears in which the following works of jonathan swift so yahoo is the deformed human being like uh, race right that that appeared in the hoihinam hoihinam as uh, the one of uh, the voyages uh, in the gulliver travels right so that's where uh, these yahoo appears and uh, hoehnam are uh, is a race of the horse who are the rulers of these yahoos right so yahoo uh, are the resemblance to the human beings that the gulliver really hates and he spend some time with the horses and when he came back after the voyage we see him not talking to anyone because he was very influenced by the horses right so yahoo is one of the race which appeared here yeah so battle of the book uh, is again a work by the jonathan swift so battle of book is happening in the king's library right king's library this this book is have this this battle is happening and this is written by this is written by jonathan swift to help or uh, to support his uh, his patron william william temple who wrote a work regarding the ancient ancient learning and and modern learnings right so there was a, a huge debate about this work 
so in that context this work was written a tale of a tub is a satire on religion by again a work is written by the jonathan swift so tale in, in a tale of tub we have three characters uh, one is a peter who represents the catholic church then is a jack who represents uh, your protestant church then we have the martin who represents the anglican church like sorofsana is not his work it is the work of daniel defoe then we have 17th question here wilfred owen where we again have to make a connection so wilfred owen have written the anthem for doomed youth here he is lamenting on the death of the of the young people in the war charles sorry wrote the songs of the ungirt runner sigfurd sassoon he is the one who wrote this aftermath poem it is again about the horrors of the world war 1 we have edward thomas he wrote the cherry trees right he he wrote this cherry trees there is a character who wants to have his own cherry trees so he planted so if we find them here so wilfred owen is 14 so 14 is here charles lee is a 2222 2, is here again yeah so this is the one let's move further here the term restoration period restoration is period is when the monarchy was restored in england to throne so charles 2 came right so and the period is from 1662 17 here and here we have the new form of drama is appearing the restoration comedy william congreve the way, way of the world very important drama so make sure you go through it right so another one here we have a place called vanity fair vanity fair is a, a uh, is a work by the thomas uh, your thackeray right william mcbiss thackeray he has also written the vanity fair and this uh, and he took this reference from the pilgrim progress right so this is a work uh, which is uh, written by uh, john bunyan vanity fair is uh, so Uh, he happened to be in the vanity fair there and vanity fair is there just to just to distract the christian the main protagonist of the pilgrim progress to uh, to distract him from the salvation and lead him to the uh, damnation leads him uh, towards the damnation so this is why we have there the vanity fair uh there we also meet the belzebub right and he uh, in this uh, in this work here at the vanity fair this this place is built by the belzebub to distract right uh, in pilgrim progress and later was the reference uh, this name uh, the name for the novel was uh, drawn by the william mcbiss thackeray for his own novel vanity fair later as well so a is the answer Question number twenty. Match the following. Match the following work of T. S. Eliot with their years of publication. So, Wasteland is a work which appeared in the nineteen twenty, a groundbreaking work of the modern period. Wasteland is uh, again we can use it as a symbol, like the uh, the way things are hap happening. It, it is uh, the, the Wasteland actually also a reference to his own mind that he was unable to write something during this period, right? Like like there is no creativity. and this is the time and this is the right after we see like in 1980 the first world war gets over and there is a huge impact of the world war on this work as well ash wednesday he wrote this uh, like after getting convert right he has uh, um, he has changed his religion in in ash wednesday this is uh, is a the theme of this work is 1930 it was published four quarters four quarters the bird not in your east cock your dry salvages your your little gidding right and all of these uh, four quartets uh, represent the elements the, the four elements respectively like your air uh, your earth your water and fire and they were published in the 1943 murder in the cathedral is played by him published in the 1935 okay so let's this is it seems like a game here wasteland is a 1 3 2 is h wednes day obviously is 2 4 yeah this one mm 21 identify the figure of speech from the following lines i find no peace and all of my war is done i fear and hope 
burn and freeze in ice so here we have oxymoron and the first one is seems like a paradox right so these are the two ones but here we have to choose the one so we can say it is the i find no peace and all my war is done so it's like sounds like a paradox but it's the second line i burn and freeze in ice so we can go with the d here so yeah uh, so your metonymy is uh, giving a different word to something for example in california we have this silicon valley silicon valley right uh, where your most of the technology startups are there so now again in bangalore we have this place bangalore here here we also have the a lot of technological startups are going on so we have also given it a name of silicon valley right uh, the, the something which resembles that we will give that name to that particular thing a, a person like if in your area you have a person who is very outspoken and speak for the other people and he is good he has gained the materialistic success in just everything and he's every every time there for you so you call him leader right so this is what uh, metonymy and the rest of the of it we have already discussed now we have question 22 here dash is the term applied to rough heavy footed and jerky versification so epiphany but the first epiphany is a manifestation right when we see the protagonist in uh, in a novel is manifesting something uh, you know uh, experience he got an experience which has changed his whole whole spectrum the way i mean his whole whole perspective the way he thinks the way he looks at life his life has completely changed uh, the one of the example we can say here the the gautam buddha who was siddhartha when he experienced uh, when he had this divine experience that how he got changed from siddhartha his transformation from the siddhartha to the gautam buddha the same thing we see in the james joyce novel the portrait of, of of the artist as a young man and there this person also manifested like the uh, when he started to just walk away from the religion he even though he came from very religious family and but he found that religion has a huge impact and influence on him but then later he realized this universal approach towards life and he grow in his life so he also manifested and this epiphany is also a term coined by the james joyce in his novel epigram is a very insightful statement but told in a very witty way for example oscar wilde said that no one is ext extremely or sorry completely unhappy when their best friends are failed right this is true and like one of this thing we also see the three did that no one is extremely happy when your uh, friends got the success right so it is insightful but uh, witty then we have dodgerel dodgerel is a very very badly written verse right ke main hu tumhara tum bhi to mere ho hi na right it doesn't make a rhyme right there is no rhyme in the verse so this is the one which is the heavy jerky footed versification your c1 let's move further here we have the 23rd question a novel that shows the development of a novelist or other artist into the stage of maturity is i know i didn't discuss d because i want you to tell me in the comment section what is cacophony is right uh, a building stroman so building stroman is a novel where we see the development of the growth of the protagonist in the novel from his childhood to from his childhood to adulthood and your arze hunks roman is the educational novel right which is not about the artist majority here sociological novel which is written about the problem of the society kunstler roman is the novel which is about the growth of the artist so this is the one artist into the stage of maturity this is the one where we see the which is also known as the artist novel oh my god is it just because of because of the cold my hands are freezed <laughs> i can barely move them uh question number 24 who according to ts eliot uh possessed a mechanism of sensibility which could differ 
devour any kind of experience they exhibit a direct sensual sensuous apprehension of thought winter having an effect on my speech as well who according to T.S. Eliot possessed a mechanism of sensibility which could devour any kind of experience they exhibit a direct sensuous sensuous apprehension of thought this is a metaphysical poet so this is an essay by the T.S. Eliot it was published in the 1921 right romantic poets romantic period Victorian poets Victorian period Victorian poets like Tennyson Robert Browning Elizabeth Daniel uh, Rossetti Gabriel Rossetti we have romantic period poets you know them all neoclassical poets neoclassical poets like your Dryden Pope so here we will do 25 questions only in the later part we will we will discuss the remaining 25 questions the paper one then we will come to the paper third who said a quibble was to him the fine fatal Cleopatra for which he lost the world who said this Samuel Dr. Samuel Johnson about John Dryden Dr. Samuel Johnson about the Shakespeare right so this line appears in uh, the dictionary which was written by the Samuel Johnson in the 1715 right 1755 uh, there we had the 42,700 some words were there so he said this uh, actually he has uh, cited all of these people there he has uh, cited John Dryden and Shakespeare and Milton a lot in this work so these are the words uh, he said regarding the Shakespeare here in this work I hope you like this video if you like this so make sure you share it with the other people who are preparing for your set examination in the remaining video we will discuss all the remaining parts and the topic so till then time you do your study push your limits my professor note signing off make sure you subscribe to the channel like the video share it with the other people thanks for watching